Eastern Oregon, a rural oasis from the big cities on the western half of the Beaver State. For months, many residents to the east have demanded a divorce, creating the so-called Greater Idaho Movement. They're so fed up, they propose moving the state border so they can become Idahoans. You'd become Idaho? Yes. Even though you're fifth generation Oregonian? Yes. Many feel those in Salem are not listening and don't care. So we launched a listening tour to Eastern and Northeast Oregon to hear from residents themselves, from the culture in the small town of John Day. What goes on here is night and day different than what goes on in Portland. It's a whole different experience. To hearing from the Grant County Sheriff on the way things operate in his neck of the woods. I have driven my patrol car 100 miles an hour for an hour and stayed inside the county to get to a call. To the issues top of mind for a rancher, after wolves killed his dog just outside his home. What's gonna kill him if it's not for a human? You know, you're not gonna have, my cows aren't gonna go out there in a, a group and go stomp a wolf. Maybe if I was lucky. But not everyone is ready to say goodbye to the rest of Oregon. So if there was a vote tomorrow to become part of Idaho for Grant County, would you say yes or no? I would say no. So what are the issues causing such a fractured state of mind? And is there a middle ground? We can't agree on anything, it seems like. That's what we're hoping to find out. Here's the story. Oregon is at a point of crisis, something that's been growing for decades, the urban-rural divide. Folks out here in central and eastern Oregon are so frustrated that if there was a vote tomorrow to move the border with Idaho, many would vote yes. Now, we don't think that'll ever happen, but it does show you how frustrated they are. And there is a deep, burning anger. A lot of folks out here feel that the cities are so big, they can pass any law they want that may work for the cities, but has statewide consequences, and that they can't stop it no matter what. They feel like nobody's listening. So we've decided to come out and hear what they have to say in an effort to amplify their voices. The Greater Idaho Movement, which is pushing the change, is no joke. 11 of Oregon's 15 eastern counties have essentially voted yes to redraw the state boundaries between Oregon and Idaho. It would make much of eastern Oregon part of Idaho. We drove five hours from Portland to the town of John Day in Grant County, hoping to gain some understanding of what's fueling the movement, to see why so many in the east want to divorce the west side of the state, to learn if the relationship between urban and rural Oregon can be saved. Yeah, Eastern Oregon's filing for divorce. <laughs> Mike Slinkard is a lifetime resident of Grant County. He's also an entrepreneur and has his own bow hunting show that runs on a cable channel. With waterfowl hunting becoming ever more popular and gobbling turkeys being the highlight of the spring hunting season, you're going to want to pay special attention to today's show. So sit back and relax and come hunting with us at Hunting with Hex. He's convinced that most who live in Oregon's big cities have no idea how different the culture is out here. What goes on here is night and day different than what goes on in Portland. It's a whole different experience. Mike's world headquarters are located on a bluff overlooking the town of John Day. The walls of his office boast trophy heads, animals that he's killed as a bow hunter. He does not expect urban viewers to understand. My grandfather um, and, and uncle actually had were cattle ranchers up in the Monument area, which was North Grant County. And then uh, my, my dad and, and his father were all uh, loggers. So, you know, I've got kind of both sides of the spectrum for Eastern Oregon, I guess. And you're third generation. Yep, third generation Oregonian. How do you feel about Oregon? You know, up until about 10 years ago, I felt great about it. I was a proud Oregonian. Um, you know, <clears throat> back in, you know, around 2000, when we were starting my original businesses, the state was actually very, very helpful. Um, but, you know, now, you know, to us, it just, there's a lot of uh, sort of craziness going on in the, you know, in the state. Um, you know, we're getting laws passed that, that we don't agree with. We really don't feel like we have a lot of representation. Um, you know, we're getting taxed way more than we ever have before. And as a business person, it makes it very difficult to, to be located here. If I didn't have my roots so deep in Grant County, I'd probably be in Idaho already, to be honest with you. But I have my, my elderly parents I'm taking care of here and, and things like that. So. Not everyone is ready to leave. Welcome to Prairie City School. 
13 miles to the east of John Day sits the small town of Prairie City. Hey, are you ready? Its only school houses kids from preschool through the 12th grade. Rectangular prism. Can we all say that? Many love the rural culture here. Teachers are understanding about kids showing up late. Many live on ranches or farms and have morning chores. Sometimes the birth of a cow or goat makes them tardy. And there are other cultural differences from the west side urban schools here. Livestock, including the school's cows, are not pets. They know that those animals are going to go to a butcher shop. They know that someone's going to eat them. So it's a whole different mindset this opposed to, yeah, pet. opposed yeah. to something that you'd have in your backyard or, you know, it's, it's just different. Amanda Rockhill is a teacher and the leader of the school's Future Farmers of America program. Her students raise the school's cows and pigs. It's JC's dad, the girl we just talked to. Her, really? Her dad donated these two hogs for our program. These two will be butchered and the meat will be going to our cafeteria for our entire school to eat. The differences between Eastern Oregon and Western Oregon are many. To get a sense for small town Oregon, you need to know that everybody knows everybody. You can't get away with anything. And even on Main Street, you can leave your nice F-150 running with no one inside. In all of Grant County, there is just one stoplight. It's right here in downtown John Day. Kathy Gill is a server in town. She has a second job working with adults with disabilities. She loves her part of Oregon. I honestly feel that we should just have our own Eastern Oregon. When you, when you come over to Eastern Oregon, people say, oh, this is really pretty, it's Oregon. No, we're Eastern Oregon. That's where we're at. It's what we call it. And um, it's God's country. It's what, it's what we've always called it. She's on the fence about whether she supports the greater Idaho movement but like many I met, she's certain that urban leaders on the west side, including the governor, do not care about east side opinions. I think she should come and listen and listen to everyone and get everybody's opinions, but I still don't think it's going to change their mind. I don't. I think they take care of the city people. The votes are there. You can see it. You know, we don't have much of a say when it comes to any part of voting. From a political perspective, she is correct that the big cities in Oregon elect the governor and other top political leaders. Take a look at the results of the 2022 election for governor. The red shows counties that voted for the Republican Christine Drazen. In Grant County, Drazen got 3,145 votes. That's 75% of all the votes cast in that county. Democrat Tina Kotek got 576 votes, just 14%. But the lopsided percentages did not matter one bit. The blue counties, with their densely packed populations, voted for Democrat Tina Kotek and made her governor. In Multnomah County alone, Kotek got nearly 266,000 votes. That's far more than the entire populations of the eight counties considered Eastern Oregon by the state's employment department. They only have a total of 191,000 people. Which brings us back to bow hunter Mike Slinkert. He and others worry about statewide laws that might make sense for the cities, but not the country. You know, we're hardworking people. You know, we, we, you know, we use diesel trucks and, 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 you know, it's a long ways between places and we have to travel. And, you know, some of the stuff that's coming down the pike we see is it's going to be hard to deal with. As a matter of fact, it'd be impossible to deal with some of it out here. He's referring in part to bills in the Oregon legislature that focus on diesel fuel. The fuel runs everything from pickup trucks to farm equipment, logging equipment, and more. It's also the focus of many who want to cut carbon emissions in Oregon and fight global warming. Two of the three bills targeting diesel in the Oregon legislature will not become law this time. But there is a third that worries many, SB 803. With few exceptions, it would outlaw regular diesel statewide in Oregon and require the sale of only renewable diesel, by the year 2030. I mean, we care about the environment as much as anybody. We live in it, um, and we're probably closer to the land than you know most urban people as well. So we care about it, but at the same time, you know, you've got to you've got to you know you know recognize cultural differences and recognize how people have to make a living in different places. You know. So the reason we're in Eastern Oregon is to talk to people about why they're so angry uh, about the state and that they would vote to go to Idaho if the vote was tomorrow. And, and how would you vote on that? I would vote, yes. I'd vote 
yes all day long twice on sunday if they let me <laughs> okay now why let's drill into that well you know the difference now between eastern and western oregon is just so vast um, I mean, I go to Western Oregon, I don't even recognize what it used to be. Um, you know, we're, you know, we're conservatives over here. We, we, we are conservative thinking. We're, you know, we're, we're kind of, I mean, you might be call us old school maybe even, but, you know, um, just philosophically, we, we match Idaho. We no longer match Oregon. Um, there's just such a divide. It feels like a marriage that has been in trouble for a long time. It really angers people because we're just not listened to. They might come and visit and see it, but they don't want to solve the issues or the problems. Is there anything the state could do to make you feel different? What would it take? If there was something that we could do, I think we'd be trying to do it. And I'm not sure what that is at this point. I think the divide just feels so, so huge. It's just like, it's just like we don't agree on, on what's, what's white and what's red almost, you know. We can't agree on anything, it seems like. We feel like we're divorcing the west side of Oregon, we really do. You know, and, and in any divorce situation, one of the first things you need to do is come to the table and see, what, see if you can patch it up. And that seems to be something that we're really lacking right now. Um, most people out here feel, we just feel like the west side doesn't care. Until we can talk, it's not going to work. Maybe it's not too late. So it sounds like you're frustrated, but you haven't at least given up on the possibility the relationship might still survive. Well, if there was some effort, um, and I, I think our side would be willing to put that forth effort, but, but right now there's no reason, we don't feel like there's a reason for them to give effort because like I said, it really is an us and them thing. Mike had some other specific things that make him angry, like the capital gains tax and gun control law measure 114 and the drug decriminalization law measure 110. But the overall sense I got was that lack of political power. That's one of the biggest frustrations out there. And many who support greater Idaho feel that state would fit their values better than Oregon. Now, tomorrow night, we're going to talk with the second in command for the greater Idaho movement and see if there's anything that can be done to stop the divorce that so many want from Oregon's big cities. In the meantime, I'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this urban-rural divide? Do you have any solutions? Our email is thestory at kgw.com or call and leave us a voicemail, 503-226-5090. I look forward to hearing from you.